drugs. You will constantly tell me like, oh, your other friends already in poly, they graduated. Like, do I not? Do I not see that? Like, obviously, I know that. Like, I'm affected by it. By telling me like, you're ashamed of me, this and that. It, it doesn't help. You wanna go grab yourself a tissue? There's something called the age crime curve. When you hit 18, 20, 21 years old, that, that sort of range, you have a peak in offending. And really from that point, there'll be a gradual drop. And by age 30, only the most hardcore offenders continue to re-offend. Probation is a second chance that we give to our young offenders. There are a set of restrictions that they need to adhere to. And these restrictions... Okay, sorry. I need to take the call. Hello? Yes. Can you slow down? OK, tell me what happened. So when you opened it, what did you see? OK, so I think the, the best thing to do right now is just to contact the police. Best not to touch any of the items. Um, don't throw them. Just be very calm about it. Just explain that these are items that you found in the house. So this is... Um, a 15-year-old, uh, he's being placed on two years probation. So I just received a call from the mother telling me that uh, she found some substances at home. We suspect that it's probably cough syrup and there were, there were pills. At their age, they could be impulsive. They have got a lot of things could be going against them, right? Because they are they're grappling with puberty, they're grappling with independence. So many developmental milestones that you have to navigate. And sometimes it's not easy. So this is not his first violation. His first violation uh, was in May, uh, where he flouted the circuit breaker measures. Uh, we found out that he brought his friends home. And I think that's a clear indication that he was testing the law. It is a concern when uh, we are talking about a 15-year-old, right? And in this particular case, his a circle of friends are known to be older. Some of them are known to be using substances. By the way, the, the, the child is, is exhibiting that problematic behaviour. It's not just the child's problem, it's also everybody's problem. Why is the young person behaving that way? What is happening in the family? Uh, and why it is happening in the family? Unless we understand why, then we cannot address the problem in that sense, you know? I don't like to study. I see studying as like a waste of time. And also friends. Uh, like on the day I want to go, uh, they will just tell me, oh, no need to come. We go out, we go out. Go MBS, Pongo area. And right until very late, to like 6 in the morning. Even though it's quite dangerous, we have fun. Uh. I have this case, he's currently 17 years old and schooling. He has multiple offences. One of the offences that he has committed was actually stealing things from a shop. I always go out with my friend, like, stay over the house. I won't go home, like, for four, three days. But we got no money, ma. And then the mama shop, 
the things off and take. I just step out my mind, then just go take only. I didn't think I would get caught. When I was in hostel, uh, I never go back to hostel for four days. After that, I seated in the isolation room for seven days. After a few days, I started being claustrophobic. I keep on banging the door. The room is really like, I don't know. I don't want to express myself going to jail. Obviously, I don't want a future. Lah. That's why I just think, just turn over relief. It's not even worth it. So I've been with him for over a year right now. I've been supervising him as the probation officer in charge. Currently, I'm working with him on returning back to school. Knowing that this boy is already motivated to work on changes, it's about setting clear and realistic goals that he can achieve. For example, ensure that he goes to school regularly. I gave him homework two weeks ago to think about three things that he can do to make sure that he won't behave in this manner, which will get him into trouble in school. What do you have to say about that? Uh, obviously, I need to change my behaviour, my uh, tone. Uh, maybe like when they tell me something, instead of not listening, right, now must listen. I just don't like people telling me what to do. Lah. The teacher will talk to me like, as though like they are very sarcastic. Then like they will talk to me like a bit rude also. Lah. I will just stand up and question them first, like, like why, why 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 me? Uh worst come to worst, like if they keep pestering me, like, I will just shout at them. Stop disturbing me, like, don't ask me, ask someone else. How will you show that you are listening to your teachers? By giving the eye contact. Also, like, body posture. But the problem is, it's easy to say, yeah. but it's not easy to do. Once I see a teacher coming, I'll be like, I'll close my eye, I'll just take one deep breath. If I burst out, it'll create more problem for my family, my population. Even my mom will be devastated. Lah. But if I keep my calm, nothing will happen. It'll just be a normal day, and everything will be fine. I kind of retained for two years like, in my school. So, pretty messed up. But, but I'm trying to keep track now. I have to go IT. Then from there, I'll work my way step by step. Next year is his final year. Mm, there's a lot of negative remarks. Rude. Sleeping. What do you mean by sleeping? Like sleeping in class. Okay, during lesson. I need to start sleeping early, lah. Mm. Which is going to be quite hard. So what time do you sleep now? Now this 6 a.m. Mm. So what are you going to do to make sure that you can sleep earlier from now onward? Okay. Uh... Just give him a knock on the head, lah. <laughs> We need to recognise that the family is integral for successful rehabilitation. So in this boy's case, uh, the mother plays an important role to help him understand why is there a need to conform or to comply with rules. And this is important because if he's not disciplined, it could result in problems with authorities. So what can be done from today and onwards? Should I the phone to mommy? Don't give me the smirk. So you surrender your phone to mommy, I'll keep it for you. Next morning when I get up, then I pass it back. Are you willing to do that? Should be lah. Because without phone control, I will be very bored. You know? All I can do is just sleep. What can he do without getting himself further into trouble? So in this case, we cannot expect him to, you know, overnight behave very well immediately. It's important to be specific yet realistic. 
we believe they can change. We believe they can change more so than the adult. We see that they're malleable and we have a better chance because things are not set. Right? These are their formative years. We want to make sure that we break the cycle early on. So this youth is uh, 18 years old. His main offence is theft. Theft of uh, motor vehicle plus riding it without a valid licence. I wouldn't pinpoint it to one reason. Certain pressure of wanting certain things that his peers has and also the pursuit of thrill. And the thrill would act as a form of coping. There were unresolved stresses from family. We realised that it is something that cannot be swept under the carpet anymore. It's been going on for about three to four years. How do you think I survived all these years? Problems left and right, you know. Frank used to get feel so alone and lonely. You have given me that privilege not to give up hope. Because I learned that mothers cannot give up hope. The time when the child discovered that they are not yours, that is the most heartbreaking moment. Sir. Home and I showed my mom the parent particulars in my health booklet was a different name. When I found out about my adoption, I found out I had three sisters. Since young, I've wanted siblings. The next day, I straight away went to meet them without telling my parents. I went behind her back to meet my sister. She didn't like it. Ah. Sometimes difficult issues, people worry that if you talk about it, it's going to crash the whole relationship. So I think it took uh, maybe weeks and months. Then I think they became more comfortable to talk about it. I think um, for, for the mum, it comes from the fear. She's very concerned about the youth's well-being, the future. Where's your father right now? At Changi Resort, right? You cannot repeat that mistake. And what happens to your biological mother? She almost died because the heart is giving problems. I went home with good intention to tell her the truth, but then she got mad at me. I regretted telling her. Lah. The punya history too sama sama staggeringly scary for me. And I don't want you to fall and trap by all this emotional turbulence, you know, hijack. You're my son. I took care of you since you were three days old. All I wanted is for my adoptive parents to be supportive to me. Happy for me. But instead, she told me... If they're good for you, and they're beneficial for your happiness, stability and security, by all means, be good to them. But you can choose to be close or far. Sometimes I feel like my parents, they, they won't understand and they will try to control me. I don't like the idea. Uh, try being in my shoes to understand how I feel. Then they, they can help, but I tell them also no use. I quit smoking, I'm quitting drinking. 
I felt so proud of myself. She was someone who used to go clubbing frequently. She used to abuse uh, drugs. Father was not approving of her delinquent lifestyle. Finally, now she's learning how to change. She managed to find herself a job. She's starting school this year. She's already trying her best, but the father is not recognizing it and affirming her. It's always right, always uh, constantly talking about the past. Eh? That's one thing I cannot take it. If I want to be really bad, uh, I can say, hey, last time you used to hit me until I bleed. Mm. You always ask me to go and kill myself. Mm. Last time this, last time that. But does last time matter or now matter? You want to talk about drugs? Am I doing it now? I've been clean for two years plus. I've been going for constant urine tests. Mm -hmm. Have I ever missed urine tests? No, eh. Well, so, I don't understand it. I'm very, uh, oh, I, I really don't know what to do. Eh. In a situation where the relationship with the father is strained, she might begin seeking relationship with negative peers instead. So this might also mean that she goes back to her old habit, which we do not want. Whatever that comes out from his mouth every single time, but it's always something bad about me. Mm. Like he will constantly tell me like, oh, your other friends already in Bali, they graduated. Like, do I not? Do I not see that? Like, obviously I know that. Like, I'm affected by it. By telling me like, you're ashamed of me, this and that. It, it doesn't help. You want to go grab yourself a tissue? Yeah, it's okay. At home, I have no peace. This is why I seek comfort in friends. They, they don't condemn me, they actually push me forward. A common sort of trend uh, comes out from all the research that we've done is that family does matter a lot. We're looking at parenting because it's not just the person, it's the environment. You put you in any environment that is not so good, you're going to get influenced. But if we can help with the environment, you have a better chance. So I'm hearing from you that you're trying your best. La. Is there anything you can do better or not? No, I, I honestly think that I'm done. If he wants to see changes in, in me, maybe he should start opening up his eyes. So in this case, when there's a lack of family support, and because of these arguments at home, we might arrange for a family session so that we can speak about some of these grievances in a safe environment. How do you feel the entire session went for you? You want to hear the truth? All the sessions. Basically, you don't really have much. Huh? The girl and the father are having consistent fights at home. It's been like this since her teenage years. That's the reason why we're having today's session, for us to speak about what can they do to meet, meet way. Father has agreed to come down for a face-to-face -face session with the girl. Unfortunately, the family has requested for privacy, so um, I will be able to provide some updates after the session. A few like really memorable moments in my life. If I were to choose three, I choose the day I found out I got sisters, the day I met my sisters, and the day my mom and dad suddenly asked me if I want to meet my mom. It really took them a lot of time to accept it, but my mom and my dad were the one who, who suddenly came to me and then say like, you want to meet your real mom? I do want to know what happened, how everybody was feeling, because it is a sensitive subject. How was it? Okay, I get to see her finally. Mm. Yeah, I, didn't, I didn't talk to her much, lah, mm. because yeah, both uh, my mom yang bubal. Then how did it 
start? What, what do you say to your mom or did she say to you? Uh, he was uh, very shy. <laughs> then my Can mom, imagine my lah, my tak pernah jumpa my kan? Mom suruh peluk. Ha. Peluk my brother juga dah, peluk dah. It's like very paisi lah. Hmm. Why paisi? Oh, orang tak kenal dia. <laughs> She gave birth to you. Yeah, I still don't know her. It could be that he was looking for the lineage, the anchorage tau. Apa yang missing yang dalam hati dia. Because on that day, when I said, did you find it? And he said, yeah, I found it. What do you find? Hmm? A sense of belonging lah. I want to, like, finally establish a good relationship with both my parents mm. and my biological mom lah. Kurangkan gaduh tu lah. What do you mean by that? What is it that both of you yang uh, struggle or quarrel about? Orang tu ni fikirlah dia, oh, dah dah jumpa mak dia, nanti ni eh, ambil kali lah gitu. So for, I think your father doesn't want to just do so lah. So you risau kalau orang try tarik him balik lah. Sebab 18 tahun cik dah, you know, both of you dah take care of him. Okay, now you tell me up front. How frequent do you correspond with your mom? Sometimes to me, uh, at least one week once. Uh. Earlier this week, she ajak pergi makan. Uh, but I'm too busy. lah. Because kerja, ambil medicine. Why didn't you share with me? When I talk to parents about sensitive family issues, uh, one of the things I always hear is, I don't know what to do, I'm lost. I think sometimes sessions might be the only time where they can express it. Getting the family members to hear each other. Tell you the truth, I don't take it lightly. Because I'm your mother, you know, I took care of you for 18 years. At least, budi bahasa tu, you must, that respect must be there. I don't want things to be done behind my back for too long. He tries to be a good son to his parents, but he also wants to establish a relationship with their natural parents. So he's trying to do both things. Say for example, mak dia ajak keluar on Saturday. How many days before dia nak beritahu? Hari yang dia tanya itu lah. Then sometimes he might feel a bit put on both sides. It's, it's, it's a trend, you know. First, terlupa. Dia takkan sampai 10 kali nak terlupa. And after that, while we were talking, he, he just shut the door. I'm too tired. Sometimes my mom will ask me stuff that I sometimes don't know the answer to. Then she keep asking, asking, asking. Then I get annoyed. I need space also. Lah. This evolve is actually absence from uh, work. He was feeling very stressed. Yeah, So that affected his focus. I think a part of him feels lost. Lah. He feels lost on how he can handle things in a manner where it makes everybody happy. So that can be overwhelming for him. How? How are you feeling? I mean, there's the banyak gila, all this stress, right? You need to find a healthy coping mechanism. Dia macam kereta. Ah. Hmm. You break down, you might have some tools in your bonnet or whatever to help you. Hmm. What is yours? We look at a huge sample of youth who have offended in Singapore. 3,000 over youth uh, over a number of years. Youth who have had, who have experienced poor parenting, relatively poor supervision from their parents, get arrested and get charged at a much earlier age. And what happens is when they come into the system, they tend to also re-offend faster. to update you about the family session that we had. It did not go as well as we expected it to be. Everyone got emotional. You know what I tell him? Daddy, I never take drugs. I never do this. I never do that. He still think I do. Even my urine test shows that it's negative. He still think I'm taking drugs. I have kept all my promises. If that is not enough to reassure him, I don't know what is that when we were trying to speak to father, he was not ready to listen. His father kept focusing on her weaknesses. 
the girl was also crying throughout the session, so we had to terminate the session prematurely. Possibly, father is concerned because he's not familiar with her friends. Mm. So something that she can look into is, you know, maybe possibly to introduce her friends to the father. Actually, she does share with father whenever she meets a new friend. She spends time with people who are either working or schooling. Activities has also changed. Recently, she also went to pink with her friend at the beach, as compared to, you know, previously with the substance abuse. Looking for opportunity yeah. as in job, is it? Yeah, job and also to see how can I do better to have a better family. The father is a single parent, so he's a single parent of the girl and her brother. So currently because of the COVID situation, he was recently retrenched. How do you feel the entire session went for you? You want to hear the truth? Basically, all the session is gone through. It don't really help much. Huh? She has been working regularly and um, she's trying her best to stick to the curfew of 10 p.m. It would be very helpful if you begin acknowledging that um, she is trying. May not, maybe not 100% yet. Sometimes I don't like to do all these things. Many times I use very strong words. I will be you as my daughter. I will not go and see you again. I'm a guy and a mother and I'm a very tough guy. So words that I use might not really help her mm. to change or might hurt her. So I do have my temper. I'll do my very best to control myself. At my age, I still need to learn. Change takes some time and uh, we can't force change. Although he is resistant, uh, we do see that he is trying. So he still attends these sessions at the end of the day. So we were not able to contact the mum for a few days. And the family had explained that she has went out and not returned home. Actually, the mum has not been home for the past four days, so we will also like to check in on what has happened. I was calling the mum because our home visit is supposed to be at 3 p.m. It's already 3.41, so we just want to make sure that she's coming back home. So when there are things that happen within the family, what we do first is to find out as much information as we can. What happened, what caused the mother to be absent. The last thing that we want was for a conflict to arise during the discussion. He mentioned to me that you have not been at home for this past few days. You ask him this is the first time. Now one day like that, okay lah, nothing lah. But this some day. First time. I just yeah. want them to realise. Four days around there, we weird. weird lah. Weird. Let us hold on for a while. Ah. Let me finish first. You didn't know when was mom coming back. Mm -hmm. What else? Like, what was she doing? She be full, you know? Like, is she like, safe? Madam, it's a surprise to us because over the one year of working with you, you have not been absent mm -mm. from your house lah, mm. for so long. So on our side, I mean, I also want to share, I was very concerned. 
like what happened to you? Do you meet with an accident? Where were oh, you no, at no, no, and stuff no, no, like no. that? They, I'm contactable always, you know. Okay. Yes. Okay. But the Only... thing was that we couldn't get through your handphone. Don't worry, lah. I will never abandon my children. Okay. I know. I know you love your children a lot. But right now is to show them. This conversation is really about problem solving. We direct the conversation to the problem rather than the person. She had a group of friends who offered to bring her out for a while. However, she forgot to um, inform her family members. I'm not angry or anything. I mean, like she wants to have fun. She needs a time out. Mm -hmm. Okay, la, go. La. Mm -hmm. But one thing is, tell us before go out. La. Because when I came back from my dad's house, I never see my mom. Until today. Madam, I understand that you need a break sometimes. It's not easy to manage everything by yourself. I think all of us do need to take a break. We call it self-care. Lah. I received a call from the mother um, highlighting to me uh, that there was a huge argument between her and the son, uh, which led to her um, uh, you know, deciding to call the police in. In the midst of the arguments and exchange of uh, you know, harsh words to each other, unfortunately, the son also said that you know, he would hurt the mother. He actually said that he would slash her. So in this particular case, I told the mother, you really need to walk away and lock yourself in the room. There's been multiple violations already. Every week, we are seeing him violating the curfew. So we came in and issued him a verbal warning. Later on, there was another incident where he didn't come home. Despite us coming in to address this, um, we, we are seeing no change. At the start, uh, he was pretty receptive to the family, but the mother has always been very cooperative with us. Why does he keep breaching his conditions, even though he knows it's wrong, mm. and we have always uh, mm. spoke to him about it? Mm. In some of our discussions with him regarding his current circle of peers, um, he was very protective of them. He wasn't willing to share information about them. Just wondering, how did he manage to get the substances that he's abusing? He used a social media platform to reach out to this supplier. It was actually hand-delivered and passed to him through the window, where the room is actually facing the main corridor. So uh, even then, uh, when we explored just a simple uh, movement of placing him in a different room, uh, he was not receptive to that. And uh, even though we sent him for urine testing, he's not willing to yes. go, right? Yes. I think this is where the mother struggles to help him sustain his good behaviour. So at the end of the panel discussion, um, the probationer might uh, continue on uh, in his probation, but then there is also the other consideration whereby we have to revoke his probation. His life will be disrupted in the sense that he's going to be residing in a structured environment, right, like the Singapore Boys' Home. It's quite a struggle emotionally um, because we put our heart and soul in the work that we do, right? And then uh, when we see them not doing very well, it is very tough.
What do you think are some of the stresses that they are facing at home? Initially, there were a lot of blame and negativity coming from mom towards the boy. Mom actually used harsh words to talk to the boy, like mom would call him stupid or dumb. The family is also facing a lot of financial stresses to the point that there are times where they are not able to afford basic needs like food as well as um, electricity. Some of these sessions with myself as well, when moms break down, uh, when she feels very upset, the children will not do anything, they will not show any reaction. Things could tense up very fast because of the poor communication. And we need to help them to understand that, you know, this has to change. I know recently you went for this chalet, right? Mm -hmm. And then, but you didn't tell me about it. How did you felt when mom didn't tell you? I never thought that my mother would do this. <laughs> yeah, I'm scared. Uh. We have been working with the family members individually. For example, with the boy through my regular sessions with him. For the mother with the family service centre social worker. But that's not enough. They have these communication issues that has stemmed since his formative years. Why do you always come home so late? Give you a phone for what? You don't call, you don't look at the time. If your mum were to say that to you, how would you feel? Shock and I'll be angry. La. You'll be angry? Yeah. You probably won't listen to her because you're already angry at that moment. Yeah. So instead of saying that, we want to change into a more helpful way of talking. It's using I statement. I feel sad, I feel angry, I feel happy. So it's a feeling word. And then the second part is the because I part. It's where you express your concern. Because I am worried. Mm. I know recently you went for this chalet, right? Mm. And then, but you didn't tell me about it. Actually, you wanted to teach both of them a lesson. When mommy is there, you all treat me invisible. How did you felt when mom didn't tell you? I never thought that my mother would do this. <laughs> yeah, I'm scared. Yeah. It's very targeted. It does not address problems individually because it gets the family members to come together and share their problems. It's also very powerful. My son has felt that I'm not listening to him. Oh, I need to change my way. And it gets the mother to realise that so after hearing him sharing his concern, that he feels scared, how do you feel? Um, happy that he's thinking of me. Not say like, just forget about me, mm. you know? I know they are finding for me. I know that they will mm. find for me, mm -hmm. or at least think for five minutes, ten minutes. Mm. And it sounds like that's like a powerful message to you. <laughs> because I love them lah. I love them a lot. If I'm about to steal something, uh, before I even touch the thing, uh, family will just pop up, right? If you do this, then you cannot record. You can see my brother family. Just family, 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 family. Anything wrong like it's about to happen, like, I think about family first. I don't want to be away from them. I don't want to be in a place that I cannot contact, physically touch them, like, hug them. So after going through more than a year, I think what the family can recognise now is that um, they have differences, but they can communicate this to one another. It's still a work in progress, as we recognise that the mum can still feel stressed at time, when she feels that she's not being listened to. I usually don't share my problem 
with them because I don't want to make them think so much also lah, you know? I remember we had one family session. Your son said, even if I cannot solve the problem, I want to know because I care. Mm. Moving forward, what's going to happen is that we will continue to do a lot of checking with you because we are very concerned about how you are doing. Mm. Like sometimes people will see us, then they'll say, oh, OK, sorry, cannot help, cannot help. When I got my permission officer, then she helped us. She followed through step by step. Lah. She walked with us all the way. She helped me with my school, helped me with my financial problem at home, helped my sis to get a job, helped my mom as well. I see that they care. Because she will do whatever it takes to help. They want us to do well in probation. They want us to finish. They also want us to pursue in life. Three in five of the youth who come into probation, their likelihood of reoffending actually goes down. It's a substantial number. That tells us that something in probation must be working. It was my dad's birthday. Everyone seems better, like at a better state of mind. Me and my dad don't understand each other. I think he has a different way of thinking. Yeah, I guess my dad has this habit of being in a state of negativity. I'm thankful that the session happened so that things got better after that. Well, I wrote him a card. I also have to understand that that is my father. He has been taking care of me since young when my mom left. You know, he could have just did the same thing as my mm. mom, but he didn't. Writing that letter is like actually at the bare minimum I can give. I, I just always remember, Lord, like he's my dad and like he's done a lot of good things for me. What was the first thing that you noticed that was different? Oh, my dad just stopped talking about the past, like completely like stopped. Right, so that's great. I think this is something that's been working on since your start of probation. They're so funny, I must need that session like that, then, have to, <laughs> then can stop. Eh? I don't understand. Why do you think that um, he has decided to like change? Maybe like he, he realised that not only me, like other people are telling him that. Like the thing about my dad is, right, he needs other people to tell him. If mm. I tell him, he don't believe me. Mm -hmm. You are going to be done with probation in the June. So we are more than halfway through it. So let's look at things that you have achieved. For these four months, I've just been cutting a lot of contacts with people. They're just not good for me. So like, why sacrifice all that that I've just built just because I want to go party for a few hours? It's just not worth it. La. I'm so proud of myself. Like, I don't even need anyone to tell me that. I can just tell myself that. So how does it feel like to no longer seek validation from others? Honestly, it's, it feels great. I read this book. It actually taught me that I don't have to seek any sort of validation from anybody. It was a lot of like, um, wanting my dad to recognize what I do. And I'm doing it because I don't want him to think like I'm a bad person. I strongly believe there is good in people. And my job is to identify this good uh, and then subsequently get them to recognize this good for themselves as well. Because if I constantly feed on people's um, recognition and their validation, mm -hmm. right, I will always be unhappy. It would always seem never enough. He 
if I didn't get caught, I, none of the opportunities that were given to me will be there. My company offered a place overseas. I'm one of the lucky ones that got shortlisted. It's a five-year traineeship program where uh, I become an apprentice for a really big company. They mentioned the pay was good, the experience would be good. Like, very thankful. Yeah, uh. the start, he was unsure on how to share with his parents. I don't know how to do it, I'm scared. How's the progress with your biological mother? Hmm. That's good. I mean, at least you remember that's something that your mom requested, kan? 100% of the world is listening. <laughs> you, you have better communication. Everybody's happier. My dad said, last time you always play out at the smallest things. Now, you patient, you talk nicely. I actually feel thankful that I got caught. Because I really need someone to help me go the right way. Ah.